Hey, guess what? You've tuned in to Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk number 81. 81. Where is that? 80? There yeah. it is. 81. All right. In case you were wondering about that. Yeah, it's another Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk. We just keep rolling with these. I've been going through all of the all the promo things I've been doing for that. It's like, God, they just keep adding up. Tech never stops. <laughs> No, as long it, as there's an doesn't. industry based around selling tech, we'll have to keep talking about it. Most That's of the time, we're probably going to be telling you not to buy things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's mostly what we do uh, most of the time. Anyway, if you've got a question for us on your home voiceover studio tech, anything at all, we will be happy to answer it. Throw it in the chat room. I know that Jeff Holman is still in there taking all your questions down, and we will get to those in just a little bit. What do you got in your update this week? Well, I'll start off with something that none of you will probably buy unless you just had a heck of a good year. Um, and that is, I'll start with the Neve 88M. So this is a USB audio interface. And here's the thing. It's $1,245. So think of something that looks a heck of a lot like and works a lot like a Scarlet 2i2. Right, only it's, only it's and a multiply the price more. by ten, <laughs> and right. you get the Neve 88M. Now, All right. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm short selling it a little bit because, of course, the price is on another scale that we're not accustomed to. Right. Well, we'll talk about it. But uh, it is, it is a really, really high, high quality audio interface that they want to basically say, "Look, we know the SSL2 is out there. We know." that you're getting, getting by with Scarlet 2i2s and everything, but we want you to have a Neve preamp in your studio. So they wanted to make it accessible. And so they've shoved two of their 88 seri 88RS series console preamps into this box. So it just looks like a, you know, like I said, it looks like a Scarlet, right? It looks like a, right. just a two-channel interface. But the quality of the preamps, the quality of the functional switches and pots and knobs and all the things inside the box are of console, like big, big console quality. I don't know. I don't really know who it's for because I think if you're going to spend this much money, you probably already have several outboard preamps at this point, an Avalon, something. I don't know. Don't need But that. And now we don't have to talk about it because we still have to do the intro to the show. We do? We do. Did I get that excited that I went right into the news? Absolutely. It's time for VoiceOver <laughs> Body Shop uh, Tech Talk right now. now. <laughs> From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B S. B S. See now that Tech was nice talk. to get. 
tech talk. No, but see if I jump it just a little bit, you hear it at the same time. See, that's it, my it trick. It works just fine. Just Alrighty. a tiny bit. Yes. So <laughs> after, now we don't have to even talk about the Neva thing because you just rambled on about that. Totally forgot oh, no, where we I'm, were. <laughs> no, no. I got more to say. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> we're here to help you out with your home voiceover studio because, you know, 20 years ago, who had a home voiceover studio? 10 years ago, a lot of people had them. Boy, the pandemic changed all that, and now everybody has to have one, despite the fact that we were telling you you needed to have one 10, 15 years ago. Of course, if you just got into voiceover, you didn't know that, but now you do, and yeah. you should have one. Anyway, if you got any questions for us, throw it in the chat room. We will be able to answer those in our next segment but uh, we got lots to cover here but you know it's important to remind you why did george and i even do this why do we do voiceover body shop tech talk it's to remind you that you know there's not a lot of guys out there that really understand it now if you're on facebook or linkedin or some of these places and everybody has their little section yes i'm an expert on home voiceover studios nobody's been doing it as long as we have we have seen it evolve from, you know, all right, I won't go from real to real, but we, we've seen it evolve from that to people, you know, the, in the mailing out FedExing tapes. dat tapes around yeah, FedExing yes. dat tapes and, you know, to the, the internet age where we can send MP3, you don't realize MP3s made what we do possible. Uh, I know we got a question a little later on about formats and, and all that kind of stuff, but if you don't understand it when you're getting started and people get really intimidated by it because they think it's computer stuff, yeah. it's a cassette recorder, guys. It's actually much simpler than that. Our or job, they stumble into a forum where they get so much oh, disparate God. information and suggestions that it's they're just completely overwhelmed. We just exactly. want to cut through the noise. That's, right. why we're, that's why we're here. Yeah. And we, we try to do it not too noisy. So, uh, if you've got, uh, if you've got a problem with your home studio, or if you need to learn how to build one properly or need someone to build it for you, uh, that's what George and I do. And you can't do any better than the two of us. And I don't say that to toot my own horn, except that that's, we that's why we're here. Horn. I'm tooting your horn. You can toot, toot your horn. That's right. You toot. And then that we anyway. get off the hook that way. That's right. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> if you want to work with George, all you have to do is go over to, uh, George, the dot tech is my place on the web. And, uh, I too have a new website coming. Mine will probably be coming in the fall. Um, but, uh, it's a huge rebuild after uh, having the same website for 12 years. Um, but we'll have a, a lot of hopefully easier to use content, easier to find, better organized, et cetera, um, as that site rolls out. Um, and uh, you can get a sound check. That's what Dan does as well. My sound check is called sound check, but Dan's is called a specimen collection cup. And his is over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. And now it's on the top of the page. So when you go to homevoiceoverstudio.com, it's right there. And for $25, I will analyze your audio. If, you're, if your studio is set up and you got your mic and you got your interface and you've set up and in your closet or wherever it is that you're recording, and you want to make sure that it is up to snuff, that it sounds what it's supposed to sound like, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. See, it's actually right there on the top of the page. Which way do I point? You, yeah, that, that's that's right that way. Bump okay. the mic while you're at it. There it yeah, is. There, there it is. Go. Yeah, I'm. I am so proud of this new website. All your questions can be answered there. You can contact me there. You can send, you know, your audio, and I will be thrilled to analyze your audio and talk to anybody that's done that with me. I'm very thorough, uh, making sure that you sound the way you're supposed to sound, and that's really important. Anyway, let's get into your tech update this week, even though you seem to have drifted into it already. But it's a uh, teaser. yeah, you'll notice that on the promo from last week that we had Novine Crumbie, what was behind us, it was the Nev 88M USB interface that was, I'm like, it's 1245. <laughs> yes. God, that <laughs> this is, is the, an expensive this interface. Is the $1,245 USB interface. And it, it pretty much does what you think it does. It has two microphones that go in. 
It's got a, a volume controller for headphones. It's got one for speakers. That's pretty much it. That might remind you of another little cute red box that many of you have in your studio. So what are you getting for an extra 1200 bucks? What are you getting? Me? Well, you're getting the spirit of Rupert Neve, who's probably rolling around in his grave right now as he watches his <laughs> mic preamps end up in a USB <laughs> interface. <laughs> I seriously doubt that this was something that they could have ever released until he passed on. God, <laughs> rest in peace. Um, but he's, he's one of the most renowned mic preamp designers in the history of, of audio recording. Um, and you're getting his legacy in a little box. It also has USB inter, uh, um, USB interface. Of course I said that, but it can be a standalone mic preamp as well. So if you don't want to record through the USB, it has in and outs on the back. So it can act as just a normal standalone mic preamp as well. It also has ADAT inputs on the back. So what does that mean? It means it just gives you some expandability. So that means now if you need to branch out into more elaborate production, you can plug in eight channels of preamps and turn it into an, a, tw a 10 channel interface. So it's, it's overkill. I know, but this is what people ask about all the time. Have you heard about the new Neve? Um, you know, it's, I'm sure it sounds incredible if it's built as well as it should be at this price point, it should last for many, many years. And again, because it can be just powered by USB, but you don't have to use the computer, even if the, you know, the digital interface technology evolves beyond this thing in 20 years, it will still be a usable mic preamp. You'll still have a Neve preamp. So, it, you know, there's something to that. Um, moving right along. The next thing on my queue, uh, let me scroll around here. Oh, this is just a little sidebar thing. My, my assistant was noticing that uploading to Google Drive or Dropbox, the usual ways that we might transfer files around, was really slow for her. And I expected that because she's on a cable modem, so her upload speed is throttled, like 20 megabits per second. But then she just she sent me a WeTransfer link out of the blue, and I was like, oh, why WeTransfer? She said, I don't know why and I don't know how, but the files were able to upload to the WeTransfer site much faster for her. Now, I don't know if this was a coincidence. I don't know if it was timing. I don't know what happened, what magic was. But anyway, if you find that sending files over these other methods is really slow for you, I guess give WeTransfer a try. Maybe that will make a difference to you because I don't know. Again, it doesn't make any sense. Your upload speeds are limited by your internet bandwidth at your studio. But for whatever reason, she said it was much faster. So who knows what kind of interesting thing that's going on there, but you might try it if you want a faster way to send files. Um, another thing that came down the pipeline after uh, all the hub, hubbaloo, 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 hubbaloo of uh, NAMM Music Trade Show is a lot of companies started releasing new products, but these products were are becoming more and more web streaming, live casting, or what they're generically now calling content creator friendly and this is one of those things this is the uh frameworks didn't expect that to get bigger when i clicked on the x <laughs> expected it to get smaller and i'm trying to shrink it and it ain't happening i'll mm. click oh that's not an x that's a get bigger button there we go ah. um the frameworks content creation desk mount stand says coming soon looks pretty nifty um if you are doing more and more and more stuff where you're being directed on camera. Well, it's got a built-in light. If you want to have your phone at eye level because maybe you read script from it, or you use your phone as your webcam, because many of us know the best webcam you own is actually your phone. It's got a place for that. It's also got a place for a tablet computer, or this looks like it could also hold a script, um, an actual printed script or a book. I think it's pretty freaking cool myself. I think it's a great looking design and I use Gator Frameworks products and I have their mic arm right here and it's built really, really well. Here's the, the business end of it. So you can see it can hold scripts. It can hold displays. It can hold all kinds of stuff. And it um, reminds me, I have a dentist appointment this week. It's a bit <laughs> like that, except probably the dentist version would be $11,000. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Right. So <laughs> Anyway, I think it's a cool, I love, I love rigs like this and 170 bucks is shockingly affordable for, for the amount of features that thing comes with. So that's something neat that I've seen coming down the pipe. 
Um, another thing is I was just told today that um, um, by Jeff Cohen, who's a regular in my, uh, I have I have a, a clubhouse for clients of George, George the Tech specifically, George, that's how I say my name. Um, and Jeff is a regular in there. And, and he mentioned today about recording into iPhone and iPad is easier if you're using Apogee Meta Recorder. My problem with recording with iPads and iPhones, Dan, is most of the apps, at least Twisted Wave, doesn't have a clear delineation of what you're actually recording. Is it recording the USB thing you plugged in, the USB mic you plugged in, or is it recording from the mic on the computer? And it seems like until you hit record and play it back, you don't know. Um, but Meta Recorder actually does have a prompt. It's telling you which input you're recording from which if you want to rely on recording to an iPhone or iPad might be a really helpful thing for you. So if you mainly just want to have a great way to capture audio, you're not concerned with doing a lot of editing. Maybe you're just going to Dropbox it to your desktop for editing later or something. Meta recorder looks pretty cool. It has a cool trick up its sleeve too. You can record on four phones or four iOS devices and it keeps track of, I guess, some kind of time code. So all those files will be in lock sync later automatically when it comes, comes time to edit. So I thought that was a pretty cool thing. Obviously it's for video production people, but it's a cool thing. Nonetheless, I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, thanks again, Jeff, for mentioning that. And lastly, and I will not go into gross Please, detail. Not too much detail. I me. just got one of these. <laughs> this is if I, it's too much light. I need a, I need a product camera so you can, how about that? There we go. This little thing, which doesn't look like much at all, is a marvel of technology. This is called the Ear Cleaner with Camera. This is basically an endoscope that you can use yourself at home. <clears throat> no, it is not for going internally. It's just for your ears. Although, I guess it could go in other <laughs> openings. <laughs> don't, don't, don't even go there. <laughs> but it is amazing because of fear for a few things. One... The camera on it is razor sharp, crisp, like a macro 1080p camera, right? And it's inside a teeny little tube. It is very small. It is quite amazing. It has a light, so obviously you can see where the sun don't shine, uh, and it does it really well. And it has a little scoop on the end that lets you extract things that you find, which I did today. Let me tell you. And what did you find? Well, I found your ear more canal. than I bargained for, uh, but uh, you really might want to consider this. Now, you got to be really, really careful because you are literally sticking a metal object into your ear canal. You have to be super careful, but it, I was blown away with how well it worked. It's even wireless. You don't even have to have a cord. It's Wi Fi video from this to your mobile phone. So you have the phone in one hand, and you got this thing in the other, and you're manipulating it like you're tuning a radio antenna. You know, and it is the craziest thing. And to, to top it all off, $22 Amazon Prime. How is that even possible? I don't even understand. It's crazy. Anyway, that's, that's all I got to say. I'm not going to show the video Thank that you. the app captured of my ear cleaning today, but just trust me, do it yourself and entertain yourself endlessly. <laughs> and anybody else who finds extracting things from the human body entertaining and i know there's a lot of That'd you out be, there yeah, man. who enjoy this and find it very satisfying so. yeah, nothing more exciting than watching a gallbladder operation <laughs> it's uh, kind of like doing <laughs> it is the closest <laughs> any of you are going to come to operating on your own body it oh. is very very interesting <laughs> all right and on that note <laughs> <laughs> you're going to talk a little bit about acoustics I'll try to talk a little bit about it, you know, seeing as we're talking about ears. You said determining. That is a ch that, that is a challenge. How do you measure or determine what sounds good measure. acoustically? Measure? Who measures? I know you measure. You go in with I, all sorts of stuff. I really, I honestly, I don't. Okay, I, good to hear that. I use my ears. Yeah, that's what our ears are for. The yeah. fact of the matter is, is George and I know what it's supposed to sound like, as we were talking about at the top of the show. When I go into somebody's closet or they're like, can you help me set up? And I go in there, I, I like to say, I sniff around. Um, you know, I, I, I did a lot of home, a lot of home uh, visits the last couple of weeks. And uh, 
was building, you know, one person had a great walk-in closet, but it's totally bare. There's no shelves. It's just, and it was kind of an odd shape. It was a blank canvas. It was a, yes, exactly. And, (laughs) uh, you know, and they had a lot of not the prime, uh, type of, you know, acoustical foam. It was, you know, the, the cheap stuff. And, uh, and I looked at it and I'm like, all right. And I will, what I will do is I will talk and I will move in a bunch of different directions and I will listen to what the reflection is. And then we set up, you know, the, 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 uh, the foam, we set up all the things that I know basically should work. And then I listen again and I listen for nodes and you, a node is basically where you, you hear some bass reflex or something that is, you know, it doesn't sound like you're outside. Uh, there is, there's something that doesn't sound quite right. And you look and see where are those things? Do you put a bass trap there? Do you just put some more foam up in that spot? The thing that I find that, that, that generally it will affect the, the acoustics more than anything else, aside from getting the foam on the walls and stuff like that, or moving blankets or some of the, the higher quality stuff is the ceiling. And a lot of people don't get that. You know, if you've got like an eight foot ceiling and you're five feet tall, you got a big echo chamber above you and that has to be treated. One of the things that I will do and, and George does this as well, is we create what's called a cloud, something that lowers the acoustical size of the room and the height of the ceiling without moving the ceiling. Uh, and I've been, I've been building more and more of these clouds. They're real easy to do. Um, but what you do is you create a frame that will fit inside the closet or in the room you're in, and then you lower it until you find that you have a nice neutral sound. And what is a neutral sound? A neutral sound is one without any echo. All you hear is your voice and not anything reverberating no echo around. No right. boomy muddiness sound. Exactly. Exactly. Sound. Right. Right. And it's still a matter of turning and turning your head and going, well, what does it sound like over here? And what does it sound like over here? Here's another one. What does it sound like when you stand up? And what does it sound like when you sit down? And as you stand up, does that change anything? And by doing all those things, you find the sweet spot in your particular room for how it's supposed to be set up. And even after I'll hang a cloud, it's still like, all right, where am I going to turn? And where does it, you know, and you just find this sweet spot where there's nothing coming either way. No measurements. It's all done with your ears and what's between your ears, which is your brain. Uh, it takes a little bit of experience and that's why it's important to work with somebody who actually knows what it's supposed to sound like, which would be me or Mr. Whittem, who's over there. See, now Sue could change these and I'd be pointing in the right direction. And Is he then over I'm there. No. Yeah. Yeah. You're, He's over there. yeah, you're, you're over there. See now, if I just <laughs> never use my left hand and point to the left, <sighs> So yeah, when, ears, when, when you're working with somebody, all. yeah, it, 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 it's, we generally use our ears and don't have, you know, we're not acousticians. Is that, did I say that right? I think so. Acoustic, acousticians. Yeah. I've actually met acousticians. So. I think it's actually just acoustician. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I've created an entire new ology here. That's okay. Uh, I love it. Yeah. It's, and that's essentially what you do, but you also, you know, you're building, you know, some of the voiceover palaces around here, but how do you do what, what's your, your, what's your method? No, I, 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 I guess I've tuned enough of these small spaces that I have some kind of formula formulaic. I wouldn't say formulas, but I just have systems that work. But, um, the hard part about the ceiling, if you're doing it yourself is it can be a little more difficult than just putting things on the wall, right? There's a right. little bit more, if you're going to DIY a ceiling system, it's a little, obviously it's just a little harder hanging things on a ceiling, right? That, so, you know, some of the companies do include or do have an additional ceiling mounting kit. And that's what you want to look for. Like ATS Acoustics, for example, has an accessory ceiling mounting hardware kit. And yes, you could go to the hardware store, you could gather all these bits and you could do it, or you could just get a kit that has everything in it that you need and will probably make it easier for you. Like allowing you to help you level it change the height of it 
um, et cetera. I just find using very long zip ties, it works very well. I just run a big, long zip tie loop and hang the panel from that, and that lets you fine Adjust tune the, the angle and right. stuff. And I don't find I'm, say, I'm hanging a cloud down more than maybe six to 12 inches from the ceiling, rarely more. If you have a high ceiling and you're sitting down, you can make it lower. Like Dan said, you can make it pretty low. Um, but uh, the biggest problem we have was low ceilings. When people are in a abnormally low ceiling space, like a whisper room, <laughs> really anything that has that low ceiling, that's our biggest challenge. We need to get you away from that ceiling. And, uh, and sitting down or even leaning on a stool or something like that might be the best, the best thing. But Dan nailed it when he said there are sweet spots in there. You, if you, I'm amazed how good a booth can sound if the mic ends up in that sweet spot, right. that node. That's the, the, that's the tricky part, finding that. But uh, if it works out for your mic placement, boy, it really can sound amazing. Yeah. You know, and then when I'm, when I'm working with people and doing audio analysis, I'm like, what direction are you facing? You know, is there noise coming from a certain direction in which Ooh, like, like, like a motorcycle going by, <laughs> um, if, you know, if, if the noise is coming from behind you, your mic is here. Remember it only picks up from one side. Try turning the mic towards the noise and that, that can get rid of it. I mean, there's all sorts of little tricks and stuff like that. And those are the things that we can help you with. If you don't understand them, we're happy to consult with you and make sure that, uh, that it sounds the, what it's supposed to sound like. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break right here and get to your questions, uh, of which are starting to pile up here, which is great. If you've got a question, throw them in the chat room. Jeff Holman is still in there writing down all your questions and relaying them to us so we can answer them here on voiceover body shop. So don't go away. We'll be right back after these important messages. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice Rocco, and you're watching voiceover body shop. It's travel time, and whether you're relaxing on a beach, sweltering in a car, or waiting for your Group 9 to board that already delayed airplane, nothing calms one down like a good read. Why not read the best real-life story entirely about voiceover from Harlan Hogan, celebrating his 46 years as a card-carrying sag after member, reflecting the quantum change that has occurred in the way voiceovers are recorded and cast in recent years. This updated second edition describes the advantages and disadvantages of auditioning and recording from home studios for clients around the world. There's useful advice after every chapter dealing with Harlan's journey from terminally shy kid to voiceover legend, new and expanded session stories from the trenches, how to make professional recordings at home and on the road, how to create demos and auditions that win jobs, how to market yourself, all about agents, unions, and fees. VoiceOver, tales and techniques of a voice actor, autographed, and it makes a great present at $19.95, only at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey, everybody, it's time for our spot with Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect. I'll tell you, the pandemic has come and, well, it keeps going. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gone. Oh, let's not fool ourselves. And this is really a, a critical tool for being able to catch those really, the big, not the low hanging fruit of the business, the, the high tree the, of the voiceover business, the best work. It really, a lot of it is being done on Source Connect. And now it feels like there's a, a connection between agents and Source Connect in a way, because they're the ones that tend to be telling folks, listen, the, the casting wants Source Connect, the production wants Source Connect, so get Source Connect. So if you're not working at the agent level, Source Connect for you might be something that you want to aspire to, or even at least sign up and get a 15-day free trial and practice with it. Learn how to use it, understand it's the idiosyncrasies of setting it up, and be ready. Add it to your skill set of things that you know how to do. You may not need it today. You may not need it in a year. But when you do, you're going to be really glad you're familiar with it because it is the number one way that studios like to record voice actors from afar. It works for their workflow. It fits into the production. It just makes everything work the way they like to work. So check it out. Head over to source-elements.com and tell them we sent you. We'd appreciate it. Well, let's get to those tech questions right after this. 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. And we're back with tons of questions about home voiceover studios, which is what we talk about. Anyway, just adjusting my volume just a little bit, making sure it sounds the way it's supposed to sound like. Anyway, let's get uh, started here with uh, Allie Hurley, voiceover alchemist. Does that mean she changes everything into gold? I don't know. <laughs> well, if she turns her wallet into gold doing voiceover, then then there we go. More power to you. All right. Well, you were talking about this. You take it. <laughs> uh, she says, I have an iLock access online. Can I still get a portable one? And can I have both? Ooh, I could do a show on iLock. There are so many <laughs> weird things about iLock. So here's the thing with iLock. They have three places that the license can be stored, right? One is the computer itself. Two is the iLock key, which looks like one of these. Here's the newest edition of it. It's very small and sleek. This is an iLock key. It looks exactly like a USB thumb drive. It essentially is. It just has an encrypted layer that makes it secure so that you cannot copy and move the iLock license without their software, right? What the whole point of it is, is to make the license transportable between systems, but very, very secure for the vendor so that source elements isn't having their license stolen, duplicated and spread around the internet. Believe me, this happens a lot to a lot of companies. So that's the point of it. Now, so I said, you could put it on your Mac, you can put it on the iLock. The third way is there's an iLock cloud now. And the thing is, not so not every application or plugin supports the cloud storage unfortunately source uh, source connect does not yet support the cloud version so you can only really choose to have it in one of two places either the iLock or the computer itself and um, you cannot have it in both at the same time that's the thing you can't just make a dupe of your license a duplicate and have it in both because now you'd be able to give the license to somebody else. So that's how it works. It only can be in one place at any one time. And uh, unfortunately, the cloud method is not one of them yet. I'm sure it will be, but it isn't yet. Works works for me. I mean, I just type it in and it turns on. I don't even need my airlock anymore. Which yeah, it's licensed to your computer, right? Yeah. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. yeah. Moving it to another computer... Yeah. It's not that hard. I've had to do it for folks. If you know how to do it, it's you know, it's, it's easy if you know how. Right? It's, it <laughs> <Yeah>. takes. <laughs> I've had to ask you a five or six times how to do it. It but. takes like two minutes, but if you if you haven't done it once in five years, you go, oh my god, how am I going to do this? Now it's yeah. not that bad. There's a thing called iLock Manager. It's automatically installed on your computer when you install Source Connect. You don't even know you have it, but it's there. It's a little quirky, you know, user interface. Once you understand it, it makes a lot of sense and it lets you move the license from one computer to your license storage area. And then on another computer, you can go grab it and put it back on the other computer. It's, I know it's annoying, but that's, that's how I lock works. All right. Um, another one, is this a follow-up? Uh, can I have both? I was told not to stick. Oh, here's another question from Allie on a different topic altogether. Yeah. You want to read that one? Yeah, sure. It's just, I was told not to stick your foam directly on the walls to allow a bit of space between the foam and the wall. Maybe put a thin piece of wood strip on the wall first and stick foam on the wood. Well, that's one way. 
I mean, the, I, I, sticking it on the wall is annoying if you have to ever take it down again. Yeah. I mean, and it, and here's, a, there's a, there's a, there's a variable here. Do you rent or do you own, uh, you know, and putting foam on the wall. Now there's a number of things you can do. Now they, they suggest you use this spray adhesive, which will destroy your wall. That's why you would use wood or cardboard, or cardboard. Or foam I, core or something as a backer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, and you, you create a bunch of different panels using the foam, using the adhesive. And that way you can hang them on the wall non-destructively as we like to say. little nails with, or. Yeah, with, with nails or a thumbtack or those, those 3M command strips, command which, strips. Which, are, which are really great. You get the really heavy duty ones though, because those you can you know, you, you, they're, they're hooked down with Velcro and you pull those off and you just pull the strips and they come off and they don't destroy the wall. And right. it gives you the ability to move the panels around a little bit to make sure that you can, uh, you know, acoustically set and tune the room the way it's supposed to be. So yeah, you don't glue them right to the wall. How many times, George, have we walked into some place where it's like, well, I got to move the foam. And then it's like, you glued it to the wall. Yeah, oh, that's what man. they tell you to do. They tell you to buy spray glue or this foam tack adhesive that's like liquid nails or something. And when you take the foam down, what you get is like these squiggles on the wall where the glue is with, with the foam that, foam stick that peels it. off. The back of the foam has <laughs> got big chisel. tears in it. It is, it is a mess. Yeah, I, I learned that lesson a long time ago. So that's the reason why we say to put it on something, wood or whatever it is, yeah. first. You know, when I first read the question, I was thinking... Wait, why would you, it's the acoustical reason for doing that. Oh no, it's not an acoustical thing. It's a, it's just a it's practical a cosmetic thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, you know, foam core works great. Cardboard. You buy a new TV, save the cardboard or a refrigerator. Those things are great for making, you know, your sound panels then, you know, and you can like, like I said, you can put them up there and you can move them. And which this reminds cool. me one time what? somebody ordered one of those, uh, oral X acoustic foam packages you know it just right. came in a big cardboard big box box right they, they don't compress their foam right they like right. their foam to be intact and then the box turned into the backer it was enough cardboard that once i cut it into a bunch of pieces it's great it was included with the box so there there you go that was value added yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah it, the, yeah really it comes in that big box why didn't anybody think of that yeah. anyway <laughs> Next question from Play the Voice Real Kids VO Family. Why do some clients want wave files at different sampling rate and resolution bit? How big of a difference does it really make? Mm. I think that's more of a question of who's on the other end. Yeah. And and you know, if the different bit rates, the different bit rates and stuff generally has to do with whether they're doing video or audio and stuff like that. Uh, because in video, generally they like 48 K for doing that. Oh, for the sample rate. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. video is 48 K typically. Right. Um, 44.1 kilohertz is other audio medium. That's right. It came from CDs right? back in that's the eighties. That's where those sample rate numbers came from. Right. CDs were 44 one dats and video was 48. And I don't know the reasoning why they went two different ways, but I yeah. think it's a geeky thing. Oh, it sounds better. I don't know anybody out there that can tell the difference unless you're going down to 8,000 or something like that. Yeah, really low sample rates or really yeah. low bit depths. So like if we would do everything at 16-bit, right? Now we're encouraging you to go to 24-bit. Yeah. Um, but 8-bit, you will notice an audible difference immediately. You'll notice yeah. there's a lot more noise in the audio. and right. Or you'll um, sound you like you're on the phone. Yeah, it, it sounds pretty. It sounds like the crappy samples of music instruments in the, from the eighties. It doesn't sound good. Right. So uh, yeah, the, the higher than that though, higher than twenty four bit forty eight k is really unusual. And I think that's really going to be for like video game producers who are particularly picky yeah. people, <laughs> particularly picky people, and they really want uh, very high, high, high bit rates and high sample rates because they're hung up on numbers right and not you on, can't hear the freaking once it goes above 44 one i'm telling you you don't you, you can't cannot especially on difference. a single track mono voice yeah which with is a voice right and it's far more dependent on the acoustical signature of the room you're in and your levels than anything else yeah if and, you're recording a concert piano okay oh yeah if you're recording a <laughs> drum kit okay 
huge ranges of frequencies and, and volumes, but yeah, right. it's, it's overkill. Yeah. If you're recording, you know, Yasha Heifetz, who I don't even know if he's still alive, playing violin. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You want to get all, you yeah, all, all every it, little yeah. bit you can. Yeah. So does it make a difference? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. No, 16 bit 44 one, you can get away with it. We prefer 24 bit 44 one or 48 kilohertz pretty much across the board these days. If you leave your settings at that and record absolutely everything at that setting, no worries. You can always resample or resave or convert to anything else from there. And no one's going to know uh, that you started with a different sample rate. So don't worry about converting or saving it as another version. They're not going to tell. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting question from Jonathan Grant, who's joining us on YouTube. Hey, Jonathan. He says, I'm finding that my 416, not his MKH 416, his 416 <laughs> is very sibilant. It's not the mic. And it's driving me nuts. Yeah, it's uh, kind okay. of the mic. Yeah. Okay. When adjusting. I mean, if, yeah. yeah sorry, well, sorry. Sorry. You finish. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Well, we'll discuss. When adjusting placement, I find myself either off mic or increasing gain due to distance, which opens me up to some rumoring. Okay. Well, we got a couple of different things going on in there. You've got an acoustical issue if you've got a ring. And it also means that you're probably over projecting a little bit. Uh, and, you know, the louder you talk, the more the acoustics of the room come into play. Yeah. You can really hear the room now, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. But not, you know, not when you're at the proper distance from the mic and you're using your indoor voice. Uh, I find that sibilance, you know, and it's just me, and, I, and George may have a slightly different take on this. Sibilance tends to be from over projecting and overusing all of the elements of your mouth. Uh, mm. If you t if you relax, and you know, there are some people that are sibilant. Yeah, maybe they just have the shape of their tongue is just a little bit different from everybody else. I mean, everything's different on everybody. So yeah. some people can be a little bit sibilant. Is it the 416 that makes you sibilant? The 416 will pick you up as you exist. That's what it does. And if you're sibilant, yeah, it's going to pick it up. Will adjusting the mic direction change that a whole lot? I've never found that. But George and I agree on how a 416 should be placed. Your turn. Go. Well, this is not a 416, but it's a stand-in for one. It's a road <laughs> it's, NT. It's a visual aid. Yeah. Okay. Visual aid. So I'll do it from <laughs> the side. If you if you're speaking with the mic pretty much right down the barrel, just slightly off so that you don't pop it, this is where you're gonna get the most sibilance. You're gonna get the most everything, right? It's gonna hear the most mouth no the most mouth noises and mouth clicks. If you start doing this and bring it up at a higher angle. It will still clear, clearly pick up your voice, but now the mic isn't pointing inside the mechanism. You know, the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when it's pointing into your mouth, it's picking up the mechanism of your voice, the jaw movement, the, all the mouth smacks and clicks, and, and likely the sibilance too. So starting to rotate the mic upward, you're going to get less and less of the pickup of all those things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a bright mic, you know, it's, it's meant to pick up voice clearly over background noise and cut so that that voice can be heard. And so when you compare it to the, say a U87 or more of the flat studio mics, it definitely will sound, seem noticeably more sibilant, but the mic isn't sibilant. You are. And that's yeah. just, we all are, we all are to a degree and it takes practice to tune the sibilance out of your performance. But yeah. it can be done, and yeah. great Relax voice actors, yeah. yeah, great voice actors know how to to control that and prevent it from becoming overbearing. Yeah. Now he says, interestingly, I don't have the same issue with the TLM one hundred and three. Totally different mic, and you know, the one hundred and three tends to be a little warmer, a little bit. It's it a little smoother at the top yeah. end. Although yeah. I find it to be sibilant on other voices. So it really has to do with where the bumps and the frequency response of the mic are now, right? So the 103 maybe has brightness at the top end and the 416 more at the upper mid range. And I, I just happened to have my 416. Oh, no way. Sheet. Yes. Well, yeah. Right. Look at that. So you see how the 416 has a pretty broad, wide boost at the top end. If you have any sibling issues anywhere in that range, then that mic's going to add three to five dB more of that. Chances are there's something in that range you don't want to be louder. 
So thanks. That's really cool to have because the diagram on their site is really tiny. Every time I look at it, it's like so tiny. So. I have no idea why I shoved that in my desk there, but, but that's like, handy. Oh, that's really handy. Show that. Yeah. No, the one of is a little smooth, a little flatter and just a different mic. I mean, they, in some circumstances, they can sound really similar based on where it's placed, the room right. acoustics. And other times, as, as you're finding out, they sound very, very different. Right. And, and one's a large diaphragm condenser and the other one's a small diaphragm condenser. So, right. But there's the 416 is a totally unique beast. It really is. Yeah. This is the closest to a mean, I would say, a knockoff of it in terms of sound quality. It's an RF designed mic, RF capsules technology. RF meaning that it uses radio frequency to modulate the sound waves. I don't know all the technical, but this uses the same technology here. So this is a pretty similar mic, um, but uh, it's also. Is 78 grams. It weighs almost nothing. It's yeah. kind of bizarre. Uh, but anyway, that if you're going to hold a mic on a boom pole, 16 feet long, you want a light mic. Anyway, yeah. moving <laughs> of right along. Of course, it's not that, not that heavy either. No. Uh, Ron M. George did an Adobe audition primer last year. Now he's done twisted wave advanced guide to recording external trash. <laughs> I think something got, into the message that wasn't supposed to yeah, be there, but yeah. I like it. Yeah. Recording, yeah. recording tr external trash. Got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when will George do an advanced guide for Adobe audition? Uh, already been done. In fact, we, we, Dan, we you were the guest on it. Yeah. Dan and I guessed it. Dan guessed it on that with me last year. Um, and it's on the same site. If you go to, uh, George, the dot tech slash webinars. Scroll down and you will see it in the Adobe section. We did an advanced one. Yeah, no. And, and we, we enjoy doing them. I, you know, webinars are fun. You know, they take preparation and it's teaching a class and doing them on zoom is, you know, or, or however we do them is it, it helps to be interactive with the audience and stuff yeah. like that. But these are all, you know, we, we do these webinars on, on different, you know, DAWs to show you that they all sound the same. It's, it's the workflow more than anything else with most of these packages in these platforms. Uh, you know, and we find that Adobe audition was designed for doing what we do, which is voiceover. It's why it's mm -hmm. called the originally it was called sound booth. And then they mixed it together with, uh, with audition, which was made for music, but you know, with the spectrogram and all the stuff in there, it really is a wonderful tool for doing voiceover. Um, you know, it has the right workflow for doing that as opposed to pro tools that people say, well, pro tools is, you know, the industry standard of which we're not talking about the same industry. If you're a recording engineer doing a lot of multi-track recording. Yeah. Pro tools is fabulous for that. If you're doing one track, what do you need? 10,000 tracks and all the other stuff that it does. It's not going to change the way you sound. It right. really isn't. And people are like, well, I'm buying the most expensive one with all the most expensive stuff. Therefore it's going to be better. It's I can tell you that also good. doesn't work out for computers now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, really the new Macs are all pretty quiet, but I remember people buying these supercharged high end video editing, monster Mac pros, MacBook pros, et cetera. And the fans were making noise like crazy trying yeah. to keep these things cooled down PCs too. These gamer PCs. Oh, I bought a gamer computer. It should be amazing for recording voiceover. High-end overkill processing, GPU, et cetera, et cetera, ain't going to make a better recording when and, the and fan fans can't speak. keep it cool. <laughs> exactly. Remember, we had the beast here. We had a PC running the show for a while. It had a liquid cooling system. I'm like, That's wow. Right. <laughs> you know, and of course, it had a little neon light in it so you could see all the... Yeah. Was it neon or, or LED? But it was yeah, like, I think it had LEDs or something. It, 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 looked, it looked like, like a gamer's comp PC. Yeah, it was like it a did. Frankenstein's lab in there. You know, like <laughs> yes. there's stuff moving around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. Grace Newton, you get this one. Oh man, my mic has been getting a buzz. Yeah, but only <laughs> when the power supply to my MacBook Air M1 is plugged into the AC outlet. Well, any ideas? Um, wow. It sounds like you've got some pretty dirty power at your place. Um, I don't know what else is plugged in. That's the other, the other thing is, do you have anything else plugged into your Mac through USB or otherwise that would also be eventually plugged into the wall? 
So if there's multiple ways that power is interconnected to it, that can cause it. But if you literally have nothing plugged in except your interface to USB and your power to the wall, and now you get buzz, you've got some pretty dirty uh, power in your home. And you might, if unplugging the power while you record is, is irritating to you, um, you might need to get a power conditioner. Um, those, the ones that are actually true power conditioners that actually have all the filtering and everything inside, they're generally going to be $200 minimum, uh, and up, um, just those surge suppressor power strips and stuff. Don't cut it. Yeah. You're going to need something with power conditioning. Um, right. so that may be helpful to you. Um, yeah. but there may be something on that circuit, like a refrigerator or something that's making noise, um, on that power yeah. circuit. I might also suggest, cause I had this one last week. Someone was like, I got a buzz in my mic. I'm like, change to the USB cable. Mm, mm. I hadn't thought of that. Uh huh. It's like, well, I got to do this. And I tried that. I'm like, have you changed the cable? How did that work out? I solved the problem. Awesome. There you go. <laughs> like, boom. Start with I, the cheap stuff. While I was USB. having lunch, I'm like, yeah, change the USB cable. Oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, That's... sometimes the cheapest thing is the fi- is is the fix. So, D- Dan was a good that was a good point. Replace cables and everything else before you go buying two, three hundred, five hundred dollar boxes, magic right. boxes. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Do, do I need a new interface? Well, let's let you know what's the algorithm of what's the the troubleshoot on this. Okay, what what goes to, into what? Try this. Okay, let's. Is it the microphone? Unplug the mic, plug in another microphone. You still getting the buzz? Okay, we know it's not the microphone. You know, and, yeah, and if the outlet tester she's talking about is one of those little things with three little lights on the back mm. that tell you whether you've wired it correctly, that's yeah, not the, that's not it. a test that's gonna be helpful to you, um, Grace. That's only gonna tell you that your electrician wired the <laughs> outlet correctly. <laughs> yeah, or um, but that's not gonna tell you much about spurious noise, RFI junk on the electrical wiring itself that's not going to help you there so yeah a lot um, a lot of that has to do with the insulation on a cable and stuff like that and that's why i was thinking well maybe the usb cable is gone you know i mean if you look at your the usb cable you power your phone in your car with it's amazing how that gets twisted and burned out really quick so it could be something simple yeah. like that. she also said she got a mac hyperdrive dock that i got at the same time as my macbook well, now, a lot of these docks have power delivery, it's called. So it says on the package PD. So if it has that, your charger for your MacBook doesn't plug into your MacBook. It plugs into the dock. So it goes power into dock, dock into Mac. If you didn't try that, try that also and see if that stops the noise or makes it worse. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> really good luck. Sorry, Grace. That's frustrating. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Douglas voice guy. Great to see you again. Which USB interfaces allow you to bypass their internal preamps using another preamp between the mic and the interface? Well, see now oh, my, my question B is why, you know, I, I think that, you know, I think George will probably agree with me. The, the reason that, you know, what's the difference between interfaces is generally the preamp in it. And we find that even, you know, for 150 bucks, you use a, uh, you know, a Scarlet, you know, by focus right or anything, you, the Yamahas or the, um, seeing the brains that Steinberg, thank you. Yeah. Uh, their preamps are fine. They're quiet. They, they have lots of gain. The new ones, every generation seems to have a whole lot more gain to them. Was it yeah. the, the new, uh, uh, the uh, Vocaster. Yeah. The Vocaster. Audient Focus makes down. one that they have like 70 dB a gain right. of quiet gain. I mean, right. that if that's anything that we've seen change over the last five, six years, that's one of the things. And if you got a lot of quiet gain, uh, you know, off, off something that's less than $200, what else do you need? You know, but why would yeah. you do that? But do they do that? And generally, because I just happen to have. A two I two sitting here. See, They're I keep all this by. stuff handy. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that and a few other ones. They've all gone into a big box now. But uh, yeah, me too. if how do you bypass that? You can't. The thing is, on the Scarlet, you can't truly bypass the preamp. It looks like you can because there's a quarter inch jack. 
Yeah. So it looks like a line in, but it's still passing through that circuit. It, it, it will work and it will work fine. You just have to ask yourself, is the preamp you're plugging into the Scarlet adding anything that the Scarlet would take away? Like, is it doing something magical to the sound that would be lost by going into the Scarlet? Probably not. Um, and are you going to hear the difference when you use that magic box that you're plugging in? I just, it just depends what you're doing with it. Um, to answer your question in a, in a more direct way, yes, they do exist. And yes, they tend to be much more expensive because, um, they're specialty specialty tools. You know, all these scarlets that are printed in batches of 10,000 or however many they make are marketed to songwriters and everybody is a songwriter, right? They're made for voiceover and podcasters. Everybody's doing this stuff. So they're selling them by the bushel, but somebody that wants something that unique and specific is much, much less, uh, much, much fewer people are buying them. So there are just so few of them out there. Like the, the app, the Apollo, for example, has a way to bypass or disable the preamps completely. The well, Apogee stuff. I mean, he wants a better existing preamp. So like an Avalon, you know, an it's Avalon, not to, it's not going to change the way you read copy. <laughs> As Bo Weaver used to say, it looks really cool in the rack. Do you know what Bo Weaver records his, all of his work through now, by the way, guys, a 416 plugged directly into a Scarlet 2i2. It is true. We have video and audio proof of him doing it. <laughs> But an Avalon looks really cool and it's got really big knobs on it and it lights up and, <laughs> and I, I get it. it <laughs> and, you know, to, to a verified, rarefied air of you out there that can hear it, then good on you. Um, it's the point of Avalon preamps is not to add distortion or coloration, by the way, they're designed to be accurate. And that's what the preamp and the focus rights designed to do. So it's not going to sound all that different, if at all really isn't we've done shootouts and comparisons and on and on it's such a it's it's such it, there there are 50 different ways to make a bigger sound difference than the preamp one of those is how far away from the mic are you speaking at that particular moment exactly how how are you more off axis how how are you tilting your head um what's the humidity <laughs> this stuff all likely has more of an effect on the sound it's your dog than the, than the preamp <laughs> yes your dog thing. growling at you there's a million things in your home and your studio and your environment that have an influence <laughs> over the sound more likely audible than the preamp so anyway sorry oh, to right. burst your bubble but, <laughs> but, we, but that's kind what of we what we've discovered having done this for for a long long time right all righty. Uh, okay. Well, that's going to do it for all your questions this week. The ones we have time for. Anyway, thanks for, uh, for all your questions. If you have a question for us, by the way, you can write to us at the guys at V O B S dot TV. And, uh, with that, we can do the, you you get priority. If you write in during the week with a question, it goes number one in the queue. Always. Yeah. Always. So, but we also appreciate people watching the show live and giving us those questions. Anyway, thank you for all your questions. Uh, that will do it for that particular section. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back to wrap everything up. And I can let Mishka in the, in the room right after this. Hi, this is Bill Farmer and you are watching voice over body shop. It's great. <laughs> Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. 
In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Alrighty. Yeah, I let Mishki in. She's been very clingy lately. She was like crawling into my pockets yesterday. I'm not quite sure what, because it was Father's Day. She's like. Oh, daddy, I love you so much. Anyway, uh, we, next week on this show, uh, it's going to be the 4th of July. So I think we're just going to run this one for two weeks. So you have lots of cho- chances to watch this. Go back so, and review. That's right. And <laughs> There's watch, a lot to see. Or we've got, this is, this is number 81. You can watch all 81 VOBS Tech Talks. That's what in, I mean. In case, review in case the content. There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot there. It just goes, cripes. We've been doing this 11 years. You know, you can see the change in technology. You can see my, my mustache get grayer. It's, it's pretty and my am- period, amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, who are our donors this week? We have Robert Leadham, Steven Chandler, Casey Clack, Jennifer, uh, John, sorry, Jonathan, you're watching the show and I said your name wrong. <laughs> Jonathan Grant, Grant, Tom Pinto, <laughs> Shelly Avellino, Patty Gibbons, Greg Thomas, a doctor voice, Antland Productions, Uncle Roy, and Martha Khan, who I know is out there watching and asking lots of questions tonight as well. Uh, hey, uh, go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and check out the new website. Uh, I mean, it's the same address. It's just, you know, it's been updated and actually works now. Uh, not that it wasn't working before, but now you can find the specimen collection cup at the top. If you want to go work with George, you go over to uh, George the dot tech and check out the webinars page. That's slash webinars. Uh, we've got the twisted wave advanced coming up in just a couple of days, June 28th. Actually, that's tomorrow. If you're watching this played back, almost out of time to catch that one. And we do have a 20% off coupon code for any bookings and webinars. V O B S fan. 2022 you can apply at the time of your order all righty we need to thank our sponsors as well mishka and harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voice actor websites.com and, and JMC jmc demos. demos let's see if they, maybe that was synced up who knows Anyway, our thanks to uh, Jeff Holman for doing a yeoman's job in the chat rooms tonight and getting us all those questions. When mm-hmm. There were lots of them. We love getting them. Sue Merlino from her office in Burbank directing us from remote. Next time, we, next time after the 4th of July break, I think we're going to be back in the studio. Stranger I'm not things can happen. positive anymore. June 11th? I think, or no, July 11th, I think July that 11th. is. Yeah. I think we're, we're going to get together and we'll make a party out of it. And we got to go find a guest who promised us once we went back in the studio, he would come. So I'm wait, will there, him. will there be mixed nuts? Uh, if you want them. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, the three of us will be here. It'll be mixed nuts anyway. <laughs> uh, and of course we need to thank Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. That's going to do it for us this week. Running, uh, you know, maybe four or five minutes over, but, All right, so. but that's fine. Uh, look, this is a very difficult business aside from being an entrepreneur and being a great voice actor, you got to have the technology down. And that's why we're here to help make sure that your technology is really good and that your ears are nice and clean. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard and I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO 
BS. And tech remember, talk. if it sounds good, it is good. And this is Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We've been doing talk. this too long. No, we haven't. We'll continue doing it. Have a great week, everybody. Later. Thank <laughs> you.